Welcome back to the SSAS and MDX training sessions, class 15. And this will be the last uh, session for SSAS. And from next session, we'll be discussing MDX concepts. So in today's session, we'll be discussing about roles and how roles are used to provide security to your cube. And uh, um, after that, we'll be spending some time on deploying the projects. There are quite a number of ways you can deploy the project, but we'll be discussing most frequently used options. Uh, so let's start with role creation. Uh, before that, what is role? Role is uh, an object that you can create to apply security to your queue. For example, um, if you want to hide a particular dimension member or Let's say you have a, a dimension region, okay? And you have 10 different, uh, four different regions, NA East, first one, uh, sorry, North America, and uh, Europe or EMEA, Latin America, and finally, APAC, Asia Pacific, okay? When you have these regions, and if you want to give access to the users based on the, re based on the region, you can restrict the data. You can restrict the cube data, uh, from accessing by others who doesn't belong to the region. APAC users can should be able to see only the data that relates to the Asia Pacific region. So that kind of security you can provide using roles. And in last session, we discussed about perspectives, which are just a view on top of it, which will limit the number of attributes, um, dimensions, and measures that an end user can see, but it won't provide any security or uh, it won't <coughs> hide the data from the users. Now, how can we hide the data? How can we provide security? We have to use the concept or object called roles. So the roles, you have, for creating, you have to use the new role option. And full means you'll have a administrator access on the database. So he can do anything. He can read the data. He can uh, process the cube. Okay. So that's the administrative role. And the second one is only process option where you, the user can process the queue but cannot do anything else. And the third one is read definition, which is frequently used because you won't give read, uh, sorry, you won't give process or admin control to the users. If you have uh, hundreds of users, you'll be giving uh, read, uh, read definition to the users. So let me start the read with the read, read definition. And you have to select what kind of access you need to provide to the users who are added to this role the second tab of it is very important third uh, second tab says that who what are, what is the list of users how many users should get this permission that you are defining as part of this role you can add individual member or you can add group so if you have more than 100 users or even more than 20 users it's a good idea to create an ad group okay and add all the 20 users to the group and add the group here instead of adding 20 members. So the advantage of creating the groups is Active Directory groups, AD groups is <coughs> uh, maintenance will be easy. You don't need to come uh, to the cube or the SSAS database to modify or to add or remove the members from this role. So this is how it works. This is your cube data and you define a role here this role will have some impact on the cube, like what can what can be seen and what can't be seen, seen by the users. And you will be adding and removing users here to the AD group. Oh, sorry, you will have a group with all the set of AD users, I mean, all the set of users. And you will add this group here to the role so that automatically all the users in this group will get access to the cube based on the role definition here. This is your role definition. This is your group. And this is your cube. If you add the new guy name, let's say Roop, so automatically this guy will get the same access on the cube like others in the same group. Okay. And if we remove this guy Roop, then he will lose the access to the cube. So that's that's why people prefer to go with group creation and maintaining the list of users that needs to get access to the cube in the AD group. Now you need to specify who is the who is the user, and this is the common page which you will be seeing in almost every Microsoft products. Uh, adding the names, you just need to type the name and check for names. It will ping you the it will ping you the name, and if it is a group, 
then you need to go on go and select these groups and type the group name here so that will add the member to the role or once you deploy to the server even then you can uh, you can request if you have an admin access on the server you can go on add the members i'll show you that too and the third one is data source which data source is belongs on whether you need to have a read access or not you don't need that go to the cubes next <coughs> where now i have not given any access you have three options read read write or uh, none if i specify none and let's say if i save this role and uh, if i process the queue so i'm processing the queue and um, once process let's try to browse and see the data because i've selected none for the cube access for the members of the role with the name role right so let me quickly process it okay this is done now let me go to the browser reconnect and to see the role wise you have to go here the icon and select the roles instead of if it is default user it will be like this you'll be seeing the cube now to test the role go here and select the roles it will list all the roles that you have so you selected the role role with the name role select okay now it is saying the cube cannot be browsed verify that the cube has been deployed or processed and processed which means the user whoever it is or whom we have i mean who user that is added to the role with the name role cannot see anything in the cube because i define the role not to show anything so this is the key thing which cube users can see that are users that are added to this role can see you have to specify it we have only one cube if you have multiple cubes you can hide few and you can uh, mark them as a uh, read for a few other things and if you want to give process access for this you can check it or you, if you leave it it will inherit from the parent page that is the general page if you have not selected the process option over there then automatically you won't get the process access the users won't get the process access and cell data this is at the cell level we will, won't be using that much and the dimension data it will be default whatever you have uh, you, I mean, whatever, uh, uh, when, when you select the cube, automatically everything will be uh, read here. Whatever the definition that we have given in the, uh, what you call, cube page. So, or you can change it to read write. And also, you have cube level dimensions here. And if you see, these are inherited. Which means these are inherited from the cube page. And you cannot edit it if it is being marked as inherited and if you want to edit and if you don't want to give access to a particular dimension go to the invoice date or oh, sorry not access give a right access to the particular dimension you can override the permissions that you have given in the parent page that is the queue page queue uh, page for this now the key thing in this one is giving access at the attribute level which users allow to uh, implement in the cubes for example we have a city let's go by city and uh, i have set of users but the users who are added to the role should be able to see only one city data that is about storm okay because i know this has some data so if i go to the advanced either i can use the basic or I can use the advanced and if you see the advanced it says that only allow the data of about town for the set of users that has been added to the role or added to this role and everything will be denied or you can select the negation part check everything and copy it and paste it in the denied set which means don't show everything uh, don't show everything don't show any member that has been added to the set in the denied member set now let me quickly save it and let me process it and before that let me do a quick change because the role name role is a little confusing so this is how you can change it change the role name so uh, i think this is the name let it be wrong too so i created a role 
with the name with the city name so this role will give access to only one city data now let me quickly save it and let me process the cube and once processed we can reconnect and we can see what data is being showed in the cube after we implement the security so then okay process completed let me quickly go and reconnect it <coughs> and if i reconnect it did i add any user or let me quickly check what uh, current user okay this is good and let me go and set the role oh, oh the role has been deleted that's the problem but i mean renamed it's not deleted it's renamed okay now let's quickly see we have the same and let's let me drag and drop the sales and uh, sorry profit and you see it's showing all the profit but when i select the city um it's showing nothing maybe is it empty okay uh above town is empty unfortunately i selected the wrong one let me select the right city which has some data but if you observe here the data for this particular one particular town in particular city is null but when you when you query the data by any other dimension then you will see all the data you see here this is showing all the data uh, and uh, this is the major disadvantage if you don't set the role properly so users can see the data by other dimensionality but not by the uh, attribute that you have selected in your security role security now let me quickly go back to the role and uh, let me change the city which has some data dimension data and this is the one which i set the security and it's about abortsburg abortsburg okay let me copy the name and rename the role to if the name is not correct whatever i've given let me save it i saved the one with the right city and let me rename the role name to, to the right city name and it's done now let me go back and process it. Processing. Okay, process completed. Now, if I try to reconnect, it will say there is no cube available because I changed the role name again. So I have to go here and set the select the right role. This is the right role. And if I select okay, now it, it will show the cube and if i filter the data if i see the profit it is again showing all the profit but if i go to the city it shows data for only the city that i have filtered okay now let me go back let me drag build to customer as long as you have that city in your query this works fine once the moment that you remove the city from your query then it will be the back i mean old story like it will show all the uh, customers information and if you see the profits it's showing all the profits so users end users will be able to see the data that they are not meant to see meant to see my intention is to set the security to show only the data of the city about bird about or i can't i can't pronounce it uh, sorry if i'm not doing it right and show the customer data build to customer who belongs to the city or the data relate i mean or the data that is related to the city okay now we have a property to change to make it work the property is very very useful one and if you go back to the dimension i mean security and if you go to the city for dimension for which we set the security and if you go to the advanced you have an enable visual enable visual totals if you check this one then it will show only the data that relates to the city that's the difference 
and let me quickly process it so remember i enable the checkbox show visual totals or enable visual totals now you can see the difference between not enabling and enabling the particular option in the role definition okay processed let me reconnect it let me hide it and let me get the sales profit and execute it and now you see you are seeing only the sales that relates to the city and now let me drag the bill to a customer and you are seeing only the bill to a customer that is related to the city now all the data will be based on the role definition that we have set so imagine in the place of city if you have a region and if you select region saying that not an um, NA region and created a role and another reason EMEA region you created a role and third region Latin America region you created a role and the fourth one APAC region you created a role and in each role you selected only one member and if you can if you start to assign the users to that particular member okay uh, to, to that particular role then it will give you the it will give security to the cube and users will be able to see the data that they are supposed to see so that is the beauty of the roles and the whatever the roles that we have discussed so far is a static role meaning the member we are hard coding the member what member user what data user can see in a particular role right any questions here so these static roles let you secure the data the way you want to but the problem is um, few cases users wants to i mean you you may have to provide dynamic security like uh, you want to maintain instead of maintaining the ad groups and adding the groups and may modify the groups and so on you may have you may want to uh, do give the security by the username or you you may want to make it dynamic whoever logs in based on the username you want to set the security so for that let's quickly see an example so for now let me delete this guy and uh, let me process it because I, I have to be at the starting position where what the cube has like uh, the complete data and because we are going to see dynamic security how we can set the dynamic security okay I hope it will not take too long okay then and let me reconnect it should fail now because I deleted the role whatever I have selected here now let me go back to the current user and let me see the view that I'm gonna get so I get profit and I get let's say build to customer they should show me all the customers okay we're back on track we're back to the uh, place where we were before starting the security now to maintain it dynamic you have to maintain a set of users so if you want to say like for example uh, user this user logged in and he should be able to see only the data that is meant for him and you don't know what data is meant for him reason is just an example you can have many 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 different things to check right for example if you, this user logs in he should be able to see the data of a particular LOB then you need to set that right and if this user logs in let's say this guy uh, yeah, uh, IB investment banking LOB he can see only investment banking LOB data and this guy should be able to see only customer consumer banking or CCB okay so you can define the relationships or you can define the security in such a way that uh, it's it's not a what you call the uh, it, it's it's a configurable and you can maintain it in the database so to do the same what you need to do is first you need to have this user somewhere right you need to have these users and you need to have this uh, information and you need to have a link between these two so this users information generally you will be getting let's say for example you are maintaining a bank related stuff and you will have all the bank account numbers and the customer names right and you can link you can define the security to see uh, i mean to expose only his account information by using the dynamic security let's first quickly check uh, an example so that you'll get some idea 
because the explaining is very difficult for me how this uh, dynamic security works. So I created few tables or I made a few tables available. Let's say, for example, uh, this is the data we have. And uh, this is a, a slowly changing dimension. And this is the active record 101493. And I created a table called users where I'll be maintaining all the user ID is an identity column. It will be increasing like one, two, three, four, five, six and so on. And user bridge table, this is the key thing. The bridge table is very, very important here. This bridges the data between the user ID, whoever logged in, and the city which he, he should be provided uh, access with. Okay. This bridge table is very, very key thing. Now, first I'm creating the users table with ID and name. It's saying there is already an object. Let me delete it if there is anything. Okay, now I created a table and I created a bridge table. We call it as a bridge table because it bridges two dimensions. Like if you see user dimension is one, city dimension is one, and it bridges between user and the city by maintaining both the IDs. And this is useful because you will be having many to many relationships. Like one user should be provided access to the multiple cities and multiple one city will be given access to multiple users right so generally um, you, you what we have seen so far is one to one relationship and one to many relationship the many to many is let's say one user will have multiple cities access and the same city will be given access to multiple users so this is many to one from this side and this guy has one to many from this side. So this will call many to many relationship. When you have data like this, then you cannot maintain in a regular table. You need to maintain in the bridge table or a table which will be maintaining all, which will be having only the keys and uh, it will have the different combinations. Like user ID one has access to the city ID one, two, three, four, five. Like it will be maintained like this one, user ID one, city one, user ID one, city two, user ID one, city three and user ID 2, city 2, user ID 2, city 3. So if you see this guy has two cities access and the, this city 2, it has access to the two users. So we call it as many to many relationship. You cannot maintain it in the regular table. So that's why we go with bridge table and this is the bridge table, this is how it looks. And now I'm trying to insert one user, my username and how I get this username? I've written a simple MDX to get the username. So username function I used, uh, what MDX will return? MDX will return this desktop hyphen so and so so and so slash rupee. This is my username. And now I'm inserting that guy. And let me see the record. So user ID is created. And uh, uh, I'm getting the city key for this Abortsburg. This is the city key. And if you see, I insert, I'm inserting that city as well as two other cities. So I'm inserting data for three cities, the bridge table, we call it as bridge table. And oops, the table is not created. User city bridge. Did I create this table? Okay, I've not created it. So if I insert the data into this table, I'll see data from data showing like, I mean, uh, data for the three combinations, like one user with the ID one has access to three cities. Let's see what are those. User bridge table, and you can see the data here. Now, I'm gonna show you how we create many to many relationships in the cube. So to create many to many relationship, what kind of data? This is a classic example for many to many relationship. For that, let me go back to the cube. What is the first thing that I have to do here? I need to get the new tables into my data source view. That's the first and foremost thing. So add or remove tables. I need users and user city bridge. Let me add it. Okay. And which one is my dimension table here? If you see the tables, this is one dimension. And uh, this is another dimension. This acts as bridge between these two. Right? This acts as bridge between these two. 
now i have uh, i have already created this dimension and i'm going to create this now okay for that let me create a dimension for the users next next users and the key column is user id i have only one user created and username next and i'll name it as users finish now i have to add this to my cube i've added a new dimension to the cube call with the name users so the bridge table the many to many relationship how you can create the many to many relationship always links like this um main fact table will be linked to the dimension table this is your d this is your main fact table which is sales table in the in our case this will return this will join with the fact table another bridge table we call it as bridge table and this dimension will this fact will be joining with another dimension table let's say this is city then this is my user and this is my user bridge table and this is my sale table okay now this is how it flows many to many it will get relationship so that the user wise data from the sale fact table will be retrieved by going through this path so for that what i need and what i have already created i need these four two two fact tables and two dimension tables i already have the users dimension here i already have the customer dimension here i already have the fact sale the pending thing is fact uh, yeah i mean fact uh, user breeze table now let's create the fact table so to create a fact table there will be no measures remember the bridge table in general there will be no measures it acts as only bridge the or we call it as fact less fact table which means there will be no actual facts in that so if for if there is no facts what we can create the count of rows is the best option to go with oops i selected the wrong one let me go and select the right table and select count of rows i selected the count of rows and the count is created now the relationship this is the key thing user bridge table has two columns one is city another one is user so i can relate these two regular the city will be joined and the city will be joined and regular user id and user id remember when you have to give many to many relationship you need two fact tables one is the main fact table with 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 facts and another one is factless fact table and remember factless fact table should have relationship to both the dimensions that you at least to the two dimensions and then only you can go with many to many relationship now you have relationship to this fact data for the city and for the user and for this fact data you have only with the city in that case you can use many to many relationship to get access if the reason is you have access here for the factless fact table for the two dimensions and at least one for the main fact table this is missing so you can go with many to many relationship here in this is the scenario where you can go for many to many you all need to click you all need to select this and select many to many and select what is the intermediate measure group so this is the intermediate measure group to me and if you see the image here this is your actual fact table and this is your customer table this is your bridge table that is what user bridge and this is your user table and this dotted arrow mark says that this are indirectly gets the data or relationship between these two there is no direct relationship between this users and this sale but if you go by this path and set many to many by using the bridge table here then this gives them relationship to the uh, relationship between the users and the sale table so as simple as this set this the concept you need to understand now you have at least two dimensions related to this same way you can go for many to many here regular sorry many to many and my bridge my sale will be my many to many so this is how you can use many to i mean you can create many to many relationship the key thing is simple at least two column two dimensions should be related to the one and at least one should be here then you can get the many to many relationship with the, with the other one so many to many the bridge table is sale 
many to many and analysis services suggest not to create many to many if the data is used if you see the warning avoid defining many to many relation when either the intermediate measure group table or any of the intermediate dimensions have 1 million or more rows so we don't have that much of data let me quickly process and let me show you how the data will be linked now between the users and the sales which there is no direct relationship right so click on run the base table is processing it's just one record sale table is processing this is the new dimension that i've created all good and now let me go to the browser reconnect and uh, oops we have some data let me go to the profit here okay and let me go to the user when i select this user the relationship the path it will take is this will go to the city and city wise it will get the information now this is the username and if i select the city it gives the city that i have selected in here see that now if i select bill to customer it shows only those three bill to customers that has the relationship because it's going by username if i take out this one now you see the other data the actual all data right so when you go by the path then it shows that okay i have only relationship to i mean this user should be able to see the data that is related to the three cities okay now let's write let's try to create dynamic role to filter the data based on the person who logged in so for that let me create a new role read definition and i don't need to give any members to this because this is dynamic it will take the member based on the logged in who logs in it will take the member name and uh, let me give the cubes read access and let me go to the dimension data and let me filter the same city but dynamically this time so here i am deselecting everything i have to write little bit of mdx um i'll be using some uh, functions which are pretty straightforward and in plain english so i'm looking for exist it should be exited exist what what i want to exit members of the city so show me only the members of the city okay where i'm using a function called string to set we call it as string to set which if you give a string it will convert to a set okay and in colon i'm giving the newly created one i think i have given the name as users dot i think username is the attribute if i'm not wrong let me quickly check i really don't remember it uh wide world importers what is uh, what i'm looking for let me go for a new query that's easy and uh, let me go wild world it's users the username and the name of this guy is this okay and username is fine dot ampersand here and i want to pass this dynamically and after that i have to end this okay this is all good now here what i have to pass i have to pass the value dynamically so whoever logs in will be taken here so if i log in my name will be taken if you log in your name will be taken whoever logs in will that guy's name will be taken and uh, what measure group you want to check the measure group name is user city bridge so this use this is used for the function exists to see if the data is available for this particular combination so if you see here i'll show you what will be the output of it in a simple mdx okay uh this ends here and this should not end here and this should go all the way here so this gives this gives this is all good all good all good yep um let's see what it returns i'm trying to return some string um as 
maybe where is the missing stuff let me quickly correct this syntax okay now if you see uh, I think I'm missing something here this should be here oops okay here and uh, here 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 this should be the case let's see so I've written something so to find out what will be the output of the execution it's saying that exists and get this and if you see it is taking my username automatically into this and it is trying to get only the uh, records that are that matches or that exists with this combination okay it gets only the city ids that exist with this combination now let me save this or before that let me quickly uh, check the syntax check okay this is all good and i'm not checking the enable visual totals for now so i've written some mdx which will dynamically which should dynamically take the user who logged in and who is trying to browse the cube and then based on that filter the cities by reading the city's information from the factless fact table that we have created the factless fact table is user city bridge i think okay so let's see how it goes okay close and uh, um, reconnect and uh, so I logged in with my username click here to select the query actually I don't think I don't need to now let me get the city What is one second? Profit and what is that user? Username one forty three. Uh, I mean, what are the value? And if you go to the city, it shows you the cities that I have access to right and uh, if I select if I take out this guy city from here and it shows you only those three cities information now if I drag let's say build to customer it shows only that particular data yep it's working I just tried whether it's working or not so I enable the visual totals here and I selected only three cities information and you see based on this username if you it will really bring the username and it will go into the bridge table and find out what are all the three cities that has linked to this particular username and then if you I mean and then the security will be applied it's all dynamic so the first step will be take the logged in user and then go and get the bridge table cities information and from there take those cities to join and get if it is exist then only get that profit information so this is here the bridge table is key bridge, bridge table plays a major role in the dynamic security now I just selected build to customer it's not showing anything except the build to customer that relates to the particular city the same way if I select city it shows only those three cities that I have access to and in this case I don't need this user dimension too because I don't need it I used it only in the city only in the what you call the security so I can hide this dimension and also let me see what date we what data we have for the date if I drag and drop the date you have you're seeing multiple dates but if you see the profits is too 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 small because it's these are the profits of a single city right it's not all the profits it has profits on every day but it's not it's the profit of only three cities that we filtered for the username uh, ROOPE. That is how you can provide. Now, whole cube is secure, 
and whole cube can see whatever you have provided access with. So this is three cities information, right? And where, where is the three cities? Let's say the city and you can see the three cities that I have access to. Now, let me quickly do something. Let me go back to the system and let me go back here into the SQL and let me delete one of the record. Let me take out Abbotsburg. I know this is Abbotsburg. Delete from uh, user bridge where city ID is equal to this guy. So I deleted one record. What all I need to do is just process it. Or I can simply process the bridge table, the, int the intermediate table. In Oops. No. Instead of processing all the stuff, what is that? Hide. So I don't need to process as far as I remember. I don't need to process everything. If you process the bridge table, which will be always, most of the cases, this will be the smallest table with only two packs or whatever. And it will be faster too. If you process this, then all the relationships for this table will be updated, all the data will be updated. Then you can, you must see the difference in the data. Let's quickly check that in the browser. So let me hide it. Let me go back to profit. And let me select, uh, let's say city. And it should show only two cities. So this is the advantage of having of maintaining the data. So if tomorrow user want to modify, you can give it as an UI to the end user and ask them to select what user, what city. Then if you process only that particular measure group, the relationship, all the links will be updated and everything will be filtered automatically, which will give you more control. The reason is using this option, you will have chance to what you call um, you, you, you will have chance to modify the cities or the regions or whatever you are using to map or whatever the column that you're using to map dynamically. If you go and change it in the database and next process or you can schedule to process only the fact table, which will be processed just like that and everything will be updated. If you have many to many relationship for many users with one single role, you can manage everything in the table. Imagine if you want to provide city level relationship and if you have 50 cities, are you going to create 50 roles? It's going to be very, very difficult to maintain. And imagine these 50 cities should be given access. I mean, multiple cities will be given access to a single user. Like say, for example, to me, 10 cities, to you, 10 cities. Then how to manage that? You have to create 50 roles and you have to create 50 groups. And in that, in that 10 groups out of the 50 groups should have my ID, employee ID. Similarly, other person should have his ID in the 10 groups. How difficult it will be to maintain that. In the database, select the city, expose all the cities that are there in the system and expose all the users that are there in the system. Select the user and select the city and everything will be inserted into your table and you just process the cube uh, or the particular fact table. Then everything will be updated automatically and the, all the data will be filtered as you're seeing here. This will be now. Now, if you go back to this, what is the uh, field that we have used invoice date? This will be even less. The values will be even smaller. If you see 20, 110, these are the small numbers because it's the data of only two cities. And if I take out one more city, it will be even less. Or if I take out all the cities, then nothing will be written. In. We can also try that if you want to quickly check. Um, let me go back here and delete from city bridge. And what we need to do is I can just process the fact table, but let me process all the stuff. And uh, if any user who doesn't have access to any city, uh, any city data, then and if he logs in to browse the cube, he'll be seeing what you're going to see now. OK, reconnect or refresh. Let me hide it. Let me see the sales data and fact data first. And then you see there is no records found, which means there is no data, no access to the guy who logged in. Uh, and uh, his he, he has no records in the uh, factless fact table that we have created. OK, this is how even the empty cells, nothing is showing because there is no access for any city at all. This is what we call as dynamic security. So. Before we wrap up, 
as I say, let's quickly discuss about the deploying, how you deploy the cubes to the different servers. And there are many ways, as, as I mentioned earlier, and we'll be discussing the most common things. And to demonstrate the same, I think I install one more instance. Let me take out the SQL. We don't need it anymore. Um, so I install one more instance with the name slash demo. Uh, this is the instance name and it has no database as of now. And this is our actual database. Uh, wide world importers. I mean uh, default instance. It has this wide world importers. Uh, we will be discussing about uh, sync option. We'll be discussing about the backup and restore and we'll be discussing about direct deploy. You mentioned three, that's more than enough. And I'll give you a brief about uh, the remaining two that I know how to deploy this project to the server. So in the database, what generally people will do is they will, I mean, in the project itself, they maintain the configuration. Now, if you see, this is a development. I can go to the configuration manager and I have only development. And uh, similarly, I can have production. Okay. And I have development and I have production. Now, let me go here, go to the properties. Active is set to production, but let me go to the configuration manager. Active is develop and uh, This is the project name. This is all good. Build deploy and the deployment, the location, the server name. I think we have to give the server name somewhere. Where is that server name? Default active plat solution platform. Okay. Project context. Build and deploy. Okay. And let me give the local host or the server name, direct server name here for the develop. And uh, where is the other one? Start object is fine. Production. Do you want to save the changes you have made to the property page? Yes. And let's go to the production now and it is going back to your local host let's say my production server is underscore demo i have created one more so select okay now i have two 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 uh, what you call the configuration similarly you can create multiple like uat for dev dt and so on if you go to the properties let me select development and you see the server name is automatically changed let me select production automatically the server name is changed and similarly, you can give the database name also. You can set all the properties for each configuration. So if you want to deploy, you, you once you create this configuration page, then if you want to deploy to the development server, what you need to do is just select this and deploy the project. But remember, the person who is deploying it should have access to the server that you have given in the server name. Now, it is which, which configuration I've given. I've given production. Right, you see the configuration is selected as production, and if, and if you see the server that it is deploying to, it is demo. So this is the production server I mentioned, right? And once you select the right configuration, if you click on run, it will deploy to the particular server. I have not touched anything. I just created the configurations. So you need to have this configuration set up for all environments. It's one solution. Right click and trigger the deploy. And now, if you see here, if I'm not wrong, the database should be at least deployed by now. Wide World Importers is deployed, and it is processing data for the Wild World, Wide World Importers, and it is all done. Now, you should be able to browse the cube in the, or query the cube in the new server, which we are assuming as a production server, and all good now. So this is one way of deploying. This is the most commonly used way. Once the configurations are selected, what are simply you have to select whatever the configurations that you want to go with or to deploy to which server you want to deploy to the server. Sorry, uh, to which server you want to deploy, select that configurations and select the deploy. And you see now I selected the development environment and automatically the server name has been changed to the 
development server name whatever we mark as without that what you call slash demo slash demo is meant for production so now it is deploying to the development so once you have these configurations you can deploy n number of times but remember for production you need to have uh, access for any server you need to have access and you uh, don't go by my word that you can deploy anytime it has to be always dependent on the requirement and if you're delivering the project to the production only then you have to have your own uh, prerequisites checked and uh, getting approvals and so on before deploying to the production in dev you can deploy anytime after you check with your team so this is one way of deploying the project to the server the second way is syncing let's say you have two different servers let's say i don't have any database here in my production server so you can use sync option sync means you need to have the cube available or database processed in any other instance let's say you have two instances one is read only instance and one uh, one is processing instance and let's say this is your processing instance which is dedicated to process 24 by 7 always it will read the data process and store the data read and process read and process so once it's completed processing the data you can sync to your production server to go up to date. So sync, what it will do is, it will go and check in the other server, which one is up to date. If it is more up to date, then it will get all the deltas and it will copy the delta files and it will sync it. So let me quickly show you the sync process. So to sync, you need to go right click and sync it here, okay? If you select sync, then you have to specify, you don't need to specify the target, you need to specify only the source. I know the source server, this is my source server, and which database you want to sync, I want to sync wide world importers, and the target will be automatically where you have right clicked and selected the sync option. So it is in the demo server, and storage location will be default, it will be specified in the properties, or you can specify your own property. And uh, you can leave all these things as is, Specify the locations for the partitions and all, and copy all or skip membership. Skip membership will skip the roles and the members that you have created. So it's better to go with copy all or ignore all and use compression when syncing the database, which means try to use compress, try to compress the files. Don't make it huge database. Once the database is synced, compress it. Compressing means uh, disk storage wise, it will save some space for you. You want to synchronize now or you want to save the script. If you click on save the script, this will give you an XMLA command which you have to run manually. Or if you do sync now and click on next and it will give you the options. What is the source server from where, which database you are syncing and what is the target server and what will be the database name and what is the synchronization met, uh, I mean, sorry, security synchronization method. You want to copy all the roles from there and use compression when syn synchronizing the database and encrypt while synchronizing. If you click on finish, the sync will start and it is pretty small one and it's gonna, it's not gonna take much time, but you can see all the files from the source directory, source folder is pulling, uh, I mean, it's getting and copying into the target. So let's see how long it's gonna take. So the advantage with sync is it will once now I'm syncing the database next time it will be even faster because there will be no deltas it get only the delta files it won't get everything it get only the delta files that's the advantage with the sync and on the other side if you process it will process everything or if you I mean uh, if you create more partitions you can process only the partition that is last or whatever but sync it is done and you can see at the end database synchronization completed successfully and you can close it once you close you can see the database copied or synced to the new server so this is most commonly used if you have multiple production servers and one server is used to process and another server is used to sync so let's say this is your production one and this is your production two here you will process it takes 15 minutes i mean only the new data you will process it takes 15 minutes and then this process will stop until it syncs here. And this will be up to date. And users will be querying only this server. You read only instance, we call it as read only or whatever the name you want. And once the sync is completed, again, it will start to process. And it will sync here. Again, it will process. 
again it will sink here again it will process again it will sink here because the question is why can't i process here if i process here it will have some lock at the time of commit phase which will not let users to query it may take some time like five minutes or two minutes to commit the code so that time users can query it to avoid that to reduce the locking time people go for its processing here and the load also will be very high if you process on the same server and if you're querying on the same server data so they process on the processing server and they'll sync it to the sync server or sometimes they go to two different read only instances and they'll sync here and here same time once the process is completed on the processing server and the advantage is it copies only delta i can show you real quick how it looks when the sync is going on so for that let let's go to the server uh, root directory uh, program files and microsoft sql and demo is the one the instance right and what will happen is okay you will have your wide world importers database and when i try to and let me show you the other way of uh, syncing using the query i'm selecting sync next i'm giving the database name as wide world importers next 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 and i'm taking a script i'm writing a script to my desktop this is other way of syncing okay uh, let me go to the desktop and i'll name it as just just for time being save and finish and it now it created a script what i need to do is go here edit it take the script and remember you have to go to the target and new query remember not on the databases folder either on the database or on the server new query xmla select the xmla and copy this command and let me have it on the other side and if i trigger this sync you can see one more dummy folder with the hash will be generated oh it's so fast there are no deltas <laughs> there are no deltas at all okay let me do something to get some deltas Delta means there should be some change and, and you know you see it was completed in just two seconds because there are no deltas so to get some deltas i'm going to do something let me unprocess this if i process clear this cube then there should be some deltas right um i'm changing the status of the target in order to show you the sync how the sync is worked okay now let me trigger it and uh, you see a folder is created here this folder will have all the deltas whatever the things it will be hexadecimal folder it will have all the deltas and it once the deltas are copied then this will be renamed and that will be deleted so if the sync is completed so this is what it will happen into the de the deltas will be copied here and the other things will be copied from here to this folder and ev once everything is copied this will be renamed to wide world importers dot the next number of this 239 means 240 and it will delete this 239 folder next time you want to see that and you see here 239.db.xml is there right this will be 240.db.xml let me show you that for that i need to do the same again i have to unprocess or process clear this process process clear um then keep an eye on these folders 239 239 this is the folder and when i trigger this it will try to trick, create a hexadecimal folder copy all the deltas from here as well as here the same thing will be copied from here deltas will copy from source to here and then this is incremented and this is incremented that's it it's done so this is how the sync works and sync always go by deltas now if i run it nothing will be there no deltas it's all good the sync is completed so deltas will be very minute if you run for every 15 minutes how many deltas will be there it's very minute so that is the advantage of going with the sync this is the second option which people frequently use the first one is direct deploy and the second one is um this one third one is backup and restore let's quickly see right click backup 
and by default it will go to the backup file backup folder what you have given in the server configuration if you go to the server configuration here there will be a backup folder data directory is where the data is folder is available log directory is where the log folder is available sorry here this log directory similarly you will have a backup directory the first one and then the same it will go to the back folder or backup folder okay now that's the default one right click select backup and uh, if you want to have a security you can provide the password okay or most of the cases i mean uh, people won't go for it if unless you are shipping this to some other location or giving to some other user and uh, this is the file, database backup file name with the extension abf which means analysis backup file and all over file over it if already there is a file with the same name you want to me to overwrite go ahead and select yes or if i don't give it let's see what happens see it's saying backup and restore failed because deleting the existing backup file backup file already existed because if you remember i created one couple of uh, weeks ago so i'm allowing to overwrite the file so now the backup has been created under the folder not of demo but of uh, the default instance microsoft sql server in the backup folder so it is completed now you see at 9 13 pm which is now it has created a backup this is how we can create the backups and this backup will be referenced in your new solution uh, to restore the database so where is the backup file available so the backup file is uh, i can go to where is the folder this yeah this is the default one right and oops what is the what is the restore source backup file so where is the demo olap backup ms sql server this is the folder uh backup or better i copy it so i copy the folder path here and i'm giving the file name here with the full extension i mean with the extension to and select ok so this is my backup for file name with the complete path and restore database what database you want me to restore i can either select this or after selecting i can also give a different name a new one storage like allow for five database all right there is no database with the name why gold import as new so i can leave it or if i restore to this one then i'll uh, i have to select allow file allow database all right and if there is any password to the backup file there is no password so i am good if i click on okay it will try to read the backup file and it will try to restore it to the new database with the name wide world importers new let's quickly see and it's done and if i go to my sql and refresh the databases and you can see wide world importers new has been created from by restoring from the backup that i have created from this on the server uh, on the default analysis server on my machine so these are the three different files and the fourth one is you will find once you get analysis services installed you will find a uh, app called deployment wizard if you search for it you will get it or else you will have it under microsoft sql server some deployment folder and so on so this is a wizard which you can use to deploy very 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 rarely used this is used only to deploy remember that only to deploy not to process at all so welcome to the analysis services deployment wizard let me go to next and database file this is something you will get from your project folder when you deploy when you deploy your project so i've never selected it but let me try where the project is and so on my project where is my project documents uh visual studio 2015 projects um this is that one i guess ssa is training ssa is training not object but in bin you see as database 
this will be created when you deploy the project remember this is not in your data or backup folders but in your project location so which server you want to go with and what is the database name i'm going with the data here and uh, uh, let's say I have a database name new in my default instance. So I have tell. Let me show you that to con to avoid the confusion. Visual Studio 2015. I have my projects here. This is the project, and this is the training. And in that you will have a bin folder. You will have these files. You have to copy these files and ship it to any user who have. I mean, let's say you sh you give these files to the admin. Then he'll copy these files in his location and he will use the deployment wizard and he'll point to the save AS database. Remember, you need to have all these four. You have to give all the four to the user. He'll select that next and he'll say, oh, it's asking whether you want to deploy partitions or not and the existing will be replaced. Yes. And deploy roles and members or deploy roles and retain members. Any expiring existing roles and members will be replaced. This is fine. Next and retain configuration settings all these things it can you can change the server name and few configuration settings like service account or what kind of account you want to use to process what, what kind of you account you want to use to impersonate and so on you can leave it most of the things looks good because the database name is only the thing that needs to be changed click on next and it's asking processing methods you want to process i mean you want you don't want to process or you want to do the default processing or full processing let me select full processing um you can do it as a single transaction and my or separate transactions let me have it in single transaction the advantage is if it fails everything will be rolled back and if it is a single transaction or if it is a not checked then if 10 are processing in parallel like dimensions cubes partitions and so on if one thing failed only that one will not be processed and the remaining will be marked as processed so let me have it as single transaction and create a deployment script if you want you can use it in future it will be created in the path whatever you have given and i don't need this deployment script click on next so you just need to follow next 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 and it creates a batch command and you see it's uh, it's deployed and it is it started processing and the name of the database is wide world importers new and the advantage with this particular method of deploying is you will give four simple files and all the size of the file four files combinedly if you see it will be only 300 kb you can even take it as a zip file and share it in your uh, share it in the mail but the problem is you need to process everything but sync is not like that sync is already processed you will just sync it now if i refresh it you will see a new wide world importers new database and the last way of deployment is which I can't show now with an example, the attach and detach. You'll have two data, two servers. You'll have database here, you'll have database here. You will detach it and you will detach it and you will copy it, do robocopy. We call robocopy. You have to use commands for that and then attach it and attach it so these two will be in sync once the detach and attach is done detach copy and attach is done so re re uh, uh, listen carefully you will detach the database in server one you will detach the database in server one two do robo copy and you will attach this and you will attach this so this will be available this will be available the disadvantage of this robo copy is during the robo copy when you detach the database until the robocopy is completed and until you attach it back the databases will be unavailable to the users to query it will be not available at all and the advantage is this is more better than sync in performance the reason is this is multi-threaded whereas the sync is single threaded so it will go copy single file by file this will copy multiple files at the same time so this is faster compared to the sync but the problem is the database will not be available during the process of robocopy and let me quickly show you how to attach and detach and robocopy command you can get it from the system let's say for example this database i have to attach i'm uh, sorry detach i'm detaching it done it is detached and this will not be available until i attach it back so attach right click and attach and uh, where is the server this is my default server OLAP not backup not log under this you'll have a new data new and if I select this select OK 
and select OK, this will attach. And now if you refresh, this has been attached. So now between detach and attach, you need to do robocopy. So you need to, you have to automate everything. It's a process. Once you automate it, it will be super good in performance and will be useful. But still, remember, you need to process it. This is useful if the source system is processed and you want to sync the data from source system to the target system. So robo copy command line example um, SSAS. Simple robo copy script for analysis services. Uh, read more. Let me show you that and if you can try that if you want to, but uh, it's a, it's comparatively complicated in configuring, but uh, performance wise it's good. Mm -mm. You can use the SSIS to do robocopy. So you'll have some commands like no one is giving the command sample commands. So you'll have some commands like this. You have to get the commands and uh, here you'll have C dot folder. What is the folder name and what is the name of the database? So our folder name of the source in our case will be uh, OLAP data and this one will be our source, for example. And the target for us will be demo OLAP data and this one where is that this one so if you specify the source and target you will have to write some command and before this executing this command you have to detach both the databases and once it is done you have to attach uh, but as i mentioned the most frequently used one is direct configurations define the configurations and deploy or synchronize the databases or um, Deployment wizard very rare cases people will use and if you have a dedicated DBA for analysis services Your people will may prefer that one too. deployment wizard uh, deployment option and the fourth one uh, What we have discussed backup and restore if you ask if you raise a ticket to the DBA to back up a database from a server And restore it into a different server. They'll take care of it You just need to specify the server names and the database name so that's it about uh, the deployments that you can do in SSAS and uh, that you can use in SSAS. And for me, I used one kind of deployment in each project. So I tried almost everything, including RoboCopy. So uh, with this, uh, most of our the SSAS topics are covered, except uh, one simple topic. I'll just give you a brief about that. And with that, we will conclude this SSAS. So the topic is reference relationship. Now we discussed about regular, uh, what you call the fact, no relationship, many to many. The reference relationship is, if you see the image here, this will be your fact table and this will be your dimension table. These two will not have direct relationship. No, there is no direct. So you'll have a dimension in between. Let's say this is your product. This is your product category. Sorry, my bad. This is your category. And this is your product you will have relationship but this will be having relationship to sale fact so in this case what you need to do is you need to select the referenced and this will be your dimension and intermediate dimension will be your product so you'll have a link between these two you will use those two ids in the reference dimension attribute and the intermediate dimension attribute then it will set i don't have table to, for uh, demonstrating this example but it's pretty straightforward. Like if you have an intermediate dimension, you will use that intermediate dimension name uh, over there in the, uh, if I clear it, uh, intermediate dimension name here. And how this reference dimension and the intermediate dimension are related will be specified here. And if you select materialize option, then what will happen is the intermediate dimension and the fact table will be joined using inner, inner, inner join. So the joins will be evaluated at the time of processing. So during the queue processing, the fact table will have an inner join with the intermediate dimension table, and then it will join with the reference dimension table during querying. Okay. So the materialize option 
will give will join the fact table and the intermediate dimension table during the processing using inner join okay and reference dimension will be at the time of querying it will uh, go for that lookups and get the data so that is the advantage of materialize it will improve the performance of the queries but the processing will be very slow compared to the other one compared to you uncheck the materialize and the major disadvantage with the materialize option checked is if you do process update you remember the keys and everything will be updated in the fact table you uh, i sure i told you you don't need to process the queue but with this materialize option check if you do process update it may lead to some wrong data if the existing records are updated in the case so what i mean to say here is materialize is very risky i mean little bit risky if your existing data is not processed or if your fact is not processed and if you do only process update to update the keys it's not going to do 100% because the intermediate dimension is already inner joined and that keys will not be updated uh, due to the materialized property we have set so that is the disadvantage of uh, a slight disadvantage of checking this material you can ignore that by default analysis services prefer because the querying will be faster but processing will be slow and the process update will cause a little bit of trouble for this kind of uh, property setting so that's it guys you can try this reference and, have, and if you have any questions you can let me know i'll help you out if you don't understand it but we're ending our analysis services sessions with this and we may revisit uh, for some calculations and all once we know mdx and then from next sessions we'll be discussing about mdx thank you for joining have a great day